So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Matt and in this video we'll be going over the AQA GCSE Maths paper of June November 2021 via paper 2 which is a calculated paper. Now there will be a link to the paper if you don't have access to it for you to have an attempt at before watching through these videos we go through the answers and I'll also include a topic breakdown so you can see which questions refer to which topic in case you struggle or unsure about a particular question and I'll also include the grade boundaries for this individual paper below as well. So let's get straight into this June November 2021 higher paper 2 calculator paper. So looking at question 1 which refers to factorizing a algebraic expression it says circle the factor of x squared minus 5x. So here if we factorize this expression here then what we end up with is x is a common factor then x minus 5 so we're either looking for x or we're looking for x minus 5 I can see an x minus 5 there moving on to question 2 which relates to ratios to equations so it says a is half of b work out the ratio of a to b now in terms of this what we want to do is want to write this as it is said so here we've got half b equals a and then what we want to try and do is get a over b so if I divide by b I get a half equals a over b and from this I can see that a has got 1 and b is going to be 2 so if I was to write that as a ratio it's going to be 1 to 2 which is our first option. Looking at question 3 it says the first three terms of a geometric progression are 2 thirds, 4 ninths, 8 twenty sevenths. circle the fourth term. So looking at the numerator there I'm multiplying by 2 and for the denominator I'm multiplying by 3. So here the next term is going to be 8 times 2 which is 16 and 27 times 3 which is 81 which is my third option. Moving on to question 4 which looks at congruent triangles is circle the reason why these triangles are congruent and again looking at the what's information has been given well I'm given three sides so it's going to be an SSS triangle. Then moving on to question 5, it's like solving this equation. So here we want to get x is all on one to one side. So we take the 3x over to the left hand side by adding 3x. So I end up with 13x equals 62.4. I then divide that by 13 and I get x equals and it's going to be either 24 over 5 or I could write that as 4.8 or I could write it as 4 and 4 fifths. So any of those three answers would be absolutely fine. Moving on to question six, it says lines A, B, C and D and E intersect as shown. Lines A and B are parallel and the question is asking us to work out the size of angle X. Now, again, there's several ways in which you could get to angle X, but let's just have a look at some common facts. So we know that this angle here is going to be 52. Why? Because it is opposite. We know opposite angles are equal. We then know that this angle here is going to be 70 degrees and that's angles on a straight line. And again, you don't need to give the proof or write down any explanations. I'm just doing that so it makes sense. And this angle here, again, is going to be 180 minus 49 because angles on a straight line. And that's going to give me an answer of 131. And then from that, I can then work out what this angle here is going to be and because angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 so for this if I then do uh, 360 minus all of these three angles that I've worked out I get 253 and then work that sum out and I get 107 so then working out angle x I'm running out of colors to use let's go for one here so x is going to be 180 minus 107 which gives me an answer of 73 degrees moving on to question 7 it says that 102 boys and 85 girls took a test the table shows the information about the mean marks the pass mark of the test was 70 was the mean mark for all of the students greater than the pass mark you must show you're working out so for this let's just do this in, in several stages so the total number of students is going to be 102 plus 85 and I've got that information from 
very top line. So that gives me an answer of 187 students. Now the next thing I then need to do is to work out the total number of marks. So the total number of marks and that's going to be equal to 102 multiplied by their mean mark which was 86.5 plus the total number of girls which is 85 multiplied by their mean which was 72.4 and if I do that calculation then I get uh, 6987 uh, 6, plus 6154 and add them all up and I get 13141 so to then work out the average mark I've got the number of students which is 187 their total number of marks which was 13,141 so here the mean mark is going to be 13141 divided by 187 and that gives me an answer of 70.27 recurring is that greater than 70 so as 70.27 recurring is greater than 70 which was the past mark uh, the answer is yes moving on to question 8 it says describe fully the single transformation that maps triangles ABC to triangle ADE so here what we're doing is we're going from the big triangle to the small triangle and do not get complacent make sure you always read the question carefully Sometimes your brain always thinks that the small triangle going to the big one, but in this case, it's the big triangle going from the small one. So for this, it is going to be an enlargement, which will be our first mark. Then we need to give the scale factor. And in this case, it's going to be the new shape, which is one over the original shape, which was four. And then we then need to give our center, which in this case is going to be here and that's going to be three nine now if you're not sure about how you get the center all you need to do is basically draw a line from each of the corresponding points and they should all meet up at one point which is going to be this point here so this is our center of enlargement and that's what would get you the three marks you get one mark for each particular statement stated Moving on to question nine, it says that a ball contains 5,000 centimeter cubed of air. More air is pumped into the ball at a rate of 160 centimeter cubed per second. The ball is full of air when it becomes a sphere with a radius of 15 centimeters. And here we've got the formula for the volume of a sphere. And it says, does it take less than one minute to fill the ball? And you must show you're working out for four marks. So to do this, let's just have a look at this. So let's go work out, first of all, the volume of the sphere which is going to be 4 thirds times pi times 15 cubed. And that gives me an answer of 4,500 pi. And I'm going to leave it as in terms of pi. If you want to write the decimal answer, that's absolutely fine. I think the decimal answer is 14,137.16694. But again, I'm just going to leave it as that because it's just a lot easier to type in. The next thing I then need to do is to work out uh, how much air is left. So from there, what we then need to do is to do the volume minus the air that's already in there. And I get an answer of 9137.166941. Then from this, what I then need to do is divide that by 160. So 9137.166941. Hopefully you've still got on your calculator. There is a decimal point there and divide that by 160 and that gives me an answer of 57.107 and that's in seconds so the question does it take less than one minute yes it does there we go moving on to question 10 it says that p is a positive number and n is a negative number for each statement tick the correct box and so p plus n so here what we've got now, try not to read this as um, P and N. Try and read it as a positive plus a negative equals a positive number. So here, when we've got a positive plus a negative, is it always positive? Well, it can be, but it's not always going to be the case. Here, we've got a positive minus minus a negative number. 
that score is going to be positive. Well, that's going to be true because in mind, if you take away two, two negatives, it becomes positive. Then here we've got P squared plus N squared is positive. Well, a positive number squared is always going to give you a positive number. A negative number squared is also going to give you a positive. So a positive plus a positive is always going to be positive. And then for the next one, it says P cubed divided by N cubed is positive. Well, that's going to be never true because a negative number cubed is always going to give you a negative answer. So this is always going to be positive. But when we divide it by a negative number, that's always going to equal a negative number. So that there is never true. Moving on to question 11, it says 250 trains arrived at a station. The number of trains that were late were recorded every 50 trains. The table shows some information about the results and the question is asking us to complete the frequency graph. So for this, what we need to do is basically to work out the relative frequency. It's the uh, number of trains that were late over the total. So it's going to be 336 divided by 150. And that gives me an answer of 0.24. This one is going to be 38 divided by 200, which gives me an answer of 0.19. And this one here, which is going to be 55 divided by 250, which gives me an answer of 0.22. The next thing for me to do then do is to plot those values. So here I've got 0.24, which is there. Then at 200, it's at 19, which is there. And at 250, it's 0.22, which is there. And then what I then want to do is I then want to draw using a ruler to, now again, I'm being very, very lazy. You should definitely be using a ruler. And you should get something that looks like that. Then for B, it says write down the best estimate of the probability of a train arriving late at station. Well, to get the best estimate, you want the biggest number of your sample size. So here the best estimate is going to be the very last one where we're looking at the most number of total trains. So the best estimate is going to be 0.22. Let me just use a difficult pen so we can see that a little bit clearer of 0.22. So moving on to question 12, it says A, B and C are three points on the circle and the radii from A and B and C are chosen. And the question is asking us, is A and C the diameter of the circle? Now in this, the key word or the key part of information here is that it says that A and B and C are the radius of the circle. So what we need to do is to prove that A and C is the, if it is the diameter, then this angle here needs to be 180 degrees. So if A and C is the diameter of the circle and A to O and C to O are the radius, then 5x plus 40 must add up to 180 degrees. So this is the proof that I'm going to be using. There are several other proofs you can do, but again, that's the one I'm going to go for. So from this, let's first of all know that angles around a point add up to 360. So if I add up those three angles, so I've got x plus 2, 2x plus 20 plus 5x plus 40, must add up to 360. So simplifying all of that, I get x plus 4x plus 40 plus 5x plus 40 equals 360. Then leaning all up the other side, I get 10x plus 80 equals 360. So 10x equals 280. So x equals 28. So from this, what I can then do is now see if this is true. So 5x plus 40 equals 5 times 28 plus 40 which does add up to 180. So therefore, AC is the diameter of the circle. And that does say diameter. There we go. 
it says that a straight line has a gradient of 6 and passes through the point 319 and the question is asking us to work out the equation of the line give your answer in the form of y equals mx plus c now there are two ways of doing the higher paper that you could do this one way would be using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 and another way would be using y equals mx plus c. And it doesn't really matter which way, which method you use, because it should give you the same answer. So if you were to use this first method, what you find is that m is the gradient, which is 6. And we've got the corner of 3, 19. So this is x1 and this is y1. So substitute those numbers values in. We get y minus 19 equals 6. x minus 3, expanding the brackets out we get 3x minus 18, take the 19 over, so we end up with y equals 6x plus 1. And if we do the y equals mx plus c version, then what we've got is m equals 6, x equals 3, and y equals 19. Let's change the colour for that one. So here we get 19 equals uh, 6 times 3 plus c, and c equals 1. So then we get y equals m, which is 6, x plus c, which is 1. And you can see there that we get the exact same answer. Moving on to question 14, it says that the population of butterflies in a park is 4,200. Assume the population increases by 12% each day. Show that after 20 days, the population will be greater than 40,000. So for this, it's compound interest. So we need to do 4,200 multiplied by a 12% increase, which is 1.12 to the power of time. So it's going to be 20. And if I type that straight into my calculator, I get 40514.43099. And that obviously is greater than 40,000. The B, it says, in fact, the population increases by 30% each day for 19 days and then decreases by 8% for one day. After 20 days, is the actual population greater than 40,000? So here, if we start off with 4,200, we show an increase of 13%. So it's going to be multiplied by 1.13 for 19 days. Then we need to show a decrease of 8%. So our decimal multiplier will be 0.92 to the power of 1. If I type that into my calculator, I get 39402.8417. So is that greater than 40,000? The answer is no. Moving on to 14C, it says that the expected number of visitors of the park each day depends on the temperature. This is on each of the 30 days in June, the park is open. The probability that the temperature is less than 21, uh, 21 degrees is 0 0.4. Work out the total number of expected visitors in the park in June. So for this, let's first of all work out the number of days that the temp is less than 21 degrees and so that's going to be 0 0.4 times 30 which gives us an answer of 12 days then let's work out the number of days the temp is going to be above 21 degrees and that's going to be 30 take away 12 or 21 or greater should we say uh, which equals 18 days so using these numbers, we can then work out the number of uh, customers or visitors, I should say. So the number of visitors is going to be uh, 12 times 700 plus 18 times 900, which gives us an answer of 24600. Moving on to question 15, it says that L is directly proportional to D squared. And when L equals 85, D equals 10, work out the equation connecting L to D. So this is direct proportion. So first we need to write this using the first line using mathematical notation. And then I replace the proportional symbol with equals K. Then I use the numbers. So A to find out the value of K. So I've got 85 equals K times 100, which is D squared. So K equals 85 over 100 or 0 0.85, or I could write it as 17 over 20. So then here the formula is going to be L equals 0 
multiplied by d squared. And again, you could easily replace 0 0.85 with its fraction equivalent. Moving on to question B, uh, 15b, it says work out the value of d when d equals 5. So all I've got to do is substitute d equals 5 into my answer of part A. So it's going to be L equals 0.85 multiplied by 5 squared. Type that into my calculator. I get an answer of 85 over 4 or 21.25. Moving on to question 16, it says that here is a cube with edge length of x centimeters. One diagonal is shown. Circle the length in centimeters of the diagonal. So here, what we can do is we can use Pythagoras, in which as it's a cube, all the three lengths are going to be x. So that's going to be x. And this length here is going to be using Pythagoras is going to be x squared plus x squared square rooted. So that's going to be the square root of 2x squared. That's what that length there is. And then to work out this diagonal, it's going to be this squared, which is x squared, plus this squared, which is square root of 2x squared, squared equals, and if I just call that y, that's going to equal y squared. So this with this here, that square cancels with that square root. So I'm left with x squared plus 2x squared equals y squared. So I've got 3x squared equals y squared. Then square rooting it all. I get square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of x squared equals y. And that square cancels with that, leaving me with root 3x equals y. And that is our first option. Moving on to question B, it says that the total length in centimetres of the edges of the cube is a multiple of 18. Circle the correct statement. So here what I can write is that we've got that 12x equals 18n. Now the reason why I've got 12x is because there are 12 edges on the cube. So 18 comes from, sorry, 12 comes from the number of edges now x is the length now we know that that is going to be a multiple of 18 so i've just called that 18n so from this we get x equals 18n over 12. now looking at this what we're looking at is can x be a whole number not a whole number or might be a whole number and the question the answer you should have is that it might be a whole number because if n is 10 then we can divide 180 by 12 and so forth but again it all depends on what n is going to be moving on to question 17 it says 20 people were asked which device they use more often a laptop or a phone the table shows the results one male and female are chosen at random work out the probability that exactly one of them said laptop now for this it's either going to be a um so for exactly one it's going to be either a probability of a male saying laptop and a female phone or we've got the probability of a male phone and a female laptop so converting this then what we get is the female a male laptop is going to be 2 over 11 times a female phone which is going to be 5 over 9 and the reason why I'm getting these totals is by adding those up and put that in brackets all means plus so a male phone is going to be 9 over 11 multiplied by um, this should be an and in case you're wondering what that symbol means and then here we've got um, it's going to be nine, 4 over 9 and if I plug that all into my calculator I get an answer of 46 over 99 then moving on to question 17b it says two males are chosen at random work out the probability that they both said phone well the probability of the first uh, male choosing a phone is going to be 9 over 11 and the second one well now I've got only got eight males with a phone 
and there's 10 all together now. So if I then type that fraction into my calculator, I get 72 over 110 or simplified gives me 36 over 55. Moving on to question 18, it says on the grid, identify the region represented by X is less or equal to five, Y is less or equal to four, and X plus Y is greater than six. So what we need to do first is we need to plot X equals five, Y equals four, and X plus Y equals six. So let's do just that. So for X equals five, that's gonna be a vertical line. And it's going to be a solid line so let's get rid of that and let's not be lazy and let's use a straight line for this and so we get something that looks like that so that line there represents x is equal to five we then need to draw y equals four color And and then we then need to do y x plus y equals six. So that's going to be a point where those two points there are connected. Let's just draw a line, which does need to be uh, dashed. So let me just do that freehand. And so it should look something that looks like that. And let me just label these lines. So in terms of the region, it's pretty obvious what the region is going to be. It's going to be this triangle here. Well, the reason why I know is because I'm looking for below that line or to the left, I should say that line. Below that line and above that line. And that should give us our region there. But again, please do make sure you are using a ruler for all those lines. Moving on to question 19, it says that the graph shows the height above ground of a toy rocket at 10 seconds. And the question says, for how long is the rocket in the air? So let me just zoom out and you can see that it's completely reset. So let me just find that question again. Oh, there we are. So, so again, there we go. So here, looking at how long is the the rocket in the air well it's going to be for this duration here which is from four seconds to six, 10 seconds so 10 take away four is going to give me six seconds then it says using the graph estimate the speed of the rocket after six seconds so and state the units of your answer so what we need to do is we need to work out the gradient at this point here so from this, what you need to do is first of all, mark six seconds on the curve. And then what you then need to do is to draw a straight line that acts as a tangent from there. Now yours might be completely different to mine, but that's not a problem. As long as you've drawn a tangent at six, that's gonna be absolutely fine. And then what we then need to do is to work out the gradient of that line there. So I can see that the height of that is gonna be 10 take away six, which is four. And the base of that triangle is going to be 7 take away 5, which is 2. So here that the answer for B is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2. And then the units are going to be meters over seconds. And there is my answer for B. Moving on to question 20, it says that a square has an area of 0 0.25 square meters. Circle the length in centimeters of one side of the square. So for this, if we just do a rubbish drawing of a square, which I've done there. So here we've got 0 0.5 meters. I could just square root that and it gives me 0 0.5. So that gives me an area of 0 0.25 meters squared. Now if I convert each of those lengths into centimeters, well, that's going to be 50 centimeters and 50 centimeters. So then the length then is going to be 50 centimeters, which is my third option. Moving on to question 21, it says that x is an integer. Prove that 35 plus 3x plus 1 squared minus 2x multiplied by 4x minus 3 is a square number. So for this, what we need to do is to multiply out the brackets. So here I've got 35 plus 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1 minus 2x or 
x minus 3. Now multiplying this out here, I'm going to get, and again I'm just going to skip a stage, so I should get 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. And let me just go back to 35 plus, and then if I expand this out, I'm going to get minus 8x squared plus 6x. And the reason why it's plus is because a minus multiplied by minus gives me a positive. Then from this, if I neaten all of this up, I get an expression of x squared plus 12x plus 36. Then if I factorize that, I get x plus 6, x plus 6, which ultimately equals x plus 6 squared. So therefore, for all values of x, the answer will always be a square number because I'm not adding or subtracting anything to those brackets. Moving on to question 22, it says that Liam uh, is trying to remember a three digit code. He knows the rule that the first digit is a cube number, the second digit is a factor of 16, and the third digit is an odd number. Liam tries at random a code that matches the rule, work out the probability that he chooses the correct code. So here, let's just split this up into the first number and the second and the third. They are supposed to resemble straight lines. So here our first one is a cube number. So how many cube numbers are there? We're not going to include zero, even though it doesn't state it there, but we're not going to have that one. So cube number between one and nine is going to be one and eight. So there's two possible numbers there. The second one, factors of 16. So here we're looking at one, two, four, and eight. So that's four numbers. And then the third one, which is an odd number, which is one, three, five, seven, and nine, in which there are five numbers. So here then, the total number of combinations we can have is going to be two, not four, two times four times five, which is 40. And so the probability then of selecting the right code is going to be one out of 40. And looking at question 23, it says that a ship sails from P to Q and then Q to R. Q is 12 miles from P and at a bearing of 0, 80. R is 28 miles from Q at a bearing of 155. And the question is asking us to work out the direct distance of P to R. So what I'm trying to work out is this here. Now, hopefully you should be able to spot that this is going to be using trigonometry and this angle here, because these two lines, the two north lines are parallel, then this is going to be 100 because supplementary angles add up to 180. So that's going to be 100 degrees. Now, because of that, I can then work out what this angle here is. And that's going to be 360 minus 155 minus 100, which gives me an answer of 105 degrees. And from this, what I can then do is use the cosine rule. So I've got, this is going to be A, that's going to be A, that's going to be B, that's going to be C. So here, all right, A equals X, capital A is 105, B equals 12, and C equals 28. I've got A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now I always like to put brackets around the B, 2BC cos A. But not essential. So here I've got x squared equals 12 squared plus 28 squared minus 2 times 12 times 28 times cos of 105. And so x squared equals, and I get 11101.926398. And so therefore x equals 33.195. 27675. So rounded up gives me 33.2 miles, and that's to one decimal place. Moving on to question 24, it says the flight of a plane was in two stages. The table shows information about the flight. In total, the flight lasted two hours. Work out the value of x. So looking at this a bit of information here, we know that the flight lasted two hours. So this plus this must equal two. So what I've got is I've got seven three one over x 
plus 287 over x minus 24 equals 2. Now this is an algebraic uh, fractions question. So what we need to do is we need to write the left hand side as a single fraction. So what we need to do is we need to find a common denominator. And we find that common denominator by multiplying the two denominators together. So here my common denominator is going to be x minus x times x minus 24. So for the first numerator, I've multiplied that by the other denominator. So that's going to be x minus 24. And the second numerator is going to be the numerator multiplied by the other denominator. So I end up with something that looks like this. And from that, what I've got is 731 x minus 24 plus 287x all divided by x, x minus 24, and that equals 2. From this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the other side, and we'll just expand some brackets in the meantime as well. So what I've got is I've got 731x minus 70, 731 times 24, which gives me an answer of 17544 plus 287x and that's going to equal and if I multiply that out it gives me 2x minus 24x multiply that by 2 I get 2x squared minus 48x then from this what we then want to do you can see that it's starting to turn like a quadratic it looked like a quadratic equation so I need to take everything all onto one side and make it equal to 0 now it makes sense to try and keep the x squared positive so let's take all of this to the other side and if I do that, I should end up with 2x squared minus 1066x plus 17544 equals 0. Now from this, you should be able to spot that they're all factors of 2. So I can divide by 2 just to make the numbers a little bit easier. But it's not going to be essential. Uh, so I should have x squared equals 533x plus 8772 equals 0. Now... You can attempt to factorize, but because of the size of the numbers, I probably wouldn't, but it does actually factorize. But I'm going to use the quadratic formula only because I think most people will. So if you use the formula, A equals 1, B equals minus 533, and C equals 8772. So here I get X equals, and it's going to be plus, minus, minus 533, plus or minus, uh, minus 533 three squared minus 4 times 1 times 8772 all divided by 2 in which if I type that all into my calculator correctly I should end up with an answer of 17 or 516 now that does actually factorize and I can just write that now as this now from this, you might be thinking, well, why on earth have we got the table when we've only used the last two columns? Well, looking at this, x can only equal 516. And the reason for that is because of this. Because if x was 17, I would end up with negative speed, and that's not going to be feasible. So here, so as we cannot have negative speed, x equals 516 so that there is our own and uh, only answer but it is really important that you still state that x can equal 17 because that is the answer to the quadratic just not the overall answer to this particular question moving on to question 25 it says the equation of a curve is x squared plus 14x plus 52 by completing the square work out the coordinates of the turning point so for this if i just write down the again so from this using completing the square I divide this number by 2 so that becomes 7 squared plus 52 and I take away the digit inside the bracket squared so y equals x plus 7 squared now it's going to be 52 minus 49 which gives me an answer of 3 so here my turning point is going to be the opposite of the number in the bracket which is minus 7 and this number here so the answer then is minus 7 3 and that is the end of this paper now again I will include the individual grade boundaries for this individual paper in the description below and so 
you can see what grade you've got on this individual paper. But remember, to get your overall grade, you need to have completed all three papers in the series and then look to the overall grade boundaries, which does differ from each paper.